In the previous video, we have started creating this create a graph method that will be responsible for creating our graph. Let's continue creating the logic. So underneath this markers list, what we are going to do is, since I have not created the method to get the has uh, crosswalks uh, bool value, bool flag from our uh, road helper, we are going to create a bool limit distance equals markers list dot count equals four so this flag will allow us to check if our road prefab has actually four markers okay so we now know that if we have the four markers we want to create uh, add the markers to the temp deck dictionary before we add them to the graph in any case for now let's simply clear the temp dictionary because we are going to make sure that we uh, populate it only if we have this limited distance flag true and now we are going to create a for each loop and we are going to loop, loop through each marker so var our marker in our markers list okay and we are going to be able now to add all those markers from the prefab to our graph since we know that those are traversable uh, positions for our pedestrian to reach. So graph, add vertex, and we are going to pass the marker dot position. So we have created first marker. And now what we want to do is access the adjacent markers list because we have pre-created the connections in our prefabs so that we can uh, push them through our graph to pre-create the connections instead of finding them through some algorithm for each. And we are going to tab tab var marker neighbor in our marker and we have get adjacent positions and those are the positions of our adjacent markers and we are going to simply call our graph add edge so edge is the connection and we are going to add edge between the marker dot position and the marker neighbor and maybe let's rename it marker neighbor position okay so we have pre-created this graph from our prefab next is if you can recall we have created this open for connection uh, flag that is responsible for telling us if we should find another position that is closest on the next mark on the next uh, road prefab on our path so first of all we need to check if our marker open for connections and we need to make sure that our path actually has the next uh, prefab uh, road prefab so i plus one if i plus one is less than path dot count this means that we indeed have the next road prefab so only then we can access the next road prefab so var next road structure equals our again placement manager and we are going to get structure at and we are going to pass the path i plus one again this allows us to access our markers on the next road prefab what we will need to do now is check if our limit distance flag is true so if it is we do not want to add the uh, markers directly to the graph but instead to add them to the temp dictionary so let's do that temp dictionary add our marker so the marker that we are traversing and the next road structure get nearest marker to and we are going to pass this marker dot position so we want to access the marker on the next road prefab that is closest to our current uh, currently selected marker so this will create the connection between two road prefabs but we do not know which connection it is if it is the closest one or the furthest one from the de destination uh, road prefab so we want to only get those two closest ones while uh, discarding the two uh, with the longest distance else we want to directly add those connections to our graph so graph dot add edge and we are going to add again marker dot position 
and we are going to get the same next root structure get nearest marker 2 so let's copy it from above and let's paste it here so here we have added directly the edge to our graph okay i hope it still makes sense if it doesn't don't worry when we visualize and print the uh, connections you will get the better idea about it so we went through this if statement and next we are still left with this temp dictionary so after we loop through each uh, marker in the markers list we will need to create if statements so if our limit distance flag is true and we need to make sure that our temp dictionary indeed has some uh, values in it so count equals four and this is because if we do not have the next position so if path.count is less or equal to i plus one we will not fill the temp dictionary and if this is not filled we cannot really take out of it anything else so we are going to create this if statement and if both conditions are true we are going to call var distance sorted markers equals and we are going to sort our temp dictionary using link library so order by and we have imported this link library and if you don't have it so alt enter and you should have the possibility to add using system.link so let's delete it and we are going to alt enter on it and you should have this using system.link okay so this function will allow us to sort our dictionary and we are going to access x which is key value pair of our dictionary and we are going to sort it in a way so lambda expression that vector 3 distance between our x dot key which is our marker dot position and the x dot value which is the destination to the closest marker so we are going to sort this dictionary by the distance from that marker to its closest marker on the, uh, the prefab that is the next in line uh, in our path. And this will make uh, the list sorted. So we have the shortest distances at the beginning and the longest distances at the end. So if you recall this image, we are going to find those positions too and those positions. And we want to discard those longest positions. So we have sorted our dictionary so it finds this first position and this second positions. And they put this put it at the beginning of our dictionary. And then uh, this those positions are at the end. And we want to only take two out of this. I think it will be list of key value pairs. And we are going to only add those two to our graph. Okay, let's go back to our code. Okay, so let's close those brackets. So we are outside of the order by and add to list to create a list of key value pairs great so we can see that the distance sorted markers uh, the uh, visual studio uh, give us a tip that it is a list of key value pairs marker and vector three so now we we know that we have four positions here but we only want to take two so four tab tab to create this i we do not we cannot really use i so let's rename it to j tab length will be two because we only want two positions and j plus plus and we want to call graph dot add edge and we want to add the distance sorted markers with key j dot key which is the marker dot position and our distance sorted markers with key j uh, with index j dot value and this is how we are going to find those two markers and those two uh, uh, edges that are shortest between the four-way or three-way and the next position on our path. And that's basically it. So we have created our graph. And now it would be a good idea to test it. So let's save it. And we are going to visualize, uh, visualize it using our debug.draw line. And we are going to print it. So let's slide it up to our get pedestrian path and after we have created this graph let's call debug dot log and we are going to type graph and since we have overridden the two string it should print us the list of uh, the, vec the vertex and all its adjacent vertices so the positions and we want to also print it or visualize it on our map 
So what we are going to do is slide it down and create a debug statement. So update. And let's call for tab tab. Oh, sorry, for each tab tab var vertex in our graph dot get vertices. So we have all the vertices on our graph. Next for each var vertex neighbor in our graph and we are going to call get connected vertices to our vertex so we have all the uh, adjacent vertices to our vertex that we are looping with and what we are going to do is call debug dot log and we are going to pass the vertex dot position since we have the vector position next we are going to pass as the uh, not log but uh, debug draw, draw line so we are going to draw line from the vertex dot position towards the vertex neighbor dot position and we want to also set the color of our line to be red and since it will draw the line on the uh, y axis equals zero i think or uh, i think the markers have some y value so instead we are going to add to it vector three dot up so we can raise this uh, graph uh, visualization by one so we, it is in floating in the air but we can more clearly see it so let's save it and now we should be able to create this graph so let's go back to unity great let's press play because everything should be in order now so what we can do is create a road so let's click road and let's create some kind of road and make sure that you can see it in our scene view you can see your markers here so back in the game view let's create a house on the one end of the road and special structure at the other and let's click our spawn agents and what you should see is our graph drawn in red our people don't care about the graph right now but this is our graph that we have created so what we can do now is we can create a road on the other side of the corner to create a four-way street and let's now spawn our agents and you can see that our four-way has created the graph and our graph is only using those two ver the markers that are closest to this straight road prefab here and before we finish this video we can go to our console and you can see that we have our graph which is simply a list with vertex printed at the start which is the position of our marker in the world position and then its neighbors so we can see that the first one which is presumably the first one on our uh, dead end either this one and this one has two positions and we can quickly check if this is okay if most of our vertices have only two neighbors but if we have our four-way street the uh, three of those should have three markers or four markers as their uh, as their connected uh, neighbors so you can quickly see that one of those has three markers one of those has four markers and another one has three markers so it means that it is all calculated good okay in any case let's give the new path to our pedestrian in the next video so see you there